Colossians chapter 2, if you will. Colossians chapter 2. And I know where we're going tonight. I believe the Lord without a shadow of a doubt in my mind and in my heart. I know God has given me these verses. And I pray, I hope I can pull from them exactly what God wants. And I'm not going to be before you long, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm go, I believe we're going to get the point across what these, these verses say here. It's, it's a powerful text, Colossians 2 and verse 8. And uh, when you're there, give me a, a good Patterson, Louisiana, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, here we go, Colossians 2 and verse 8, and the Bible says this. Beware, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. Yes, yes. You are complete oh, yeah. in him. You are complete in him. Which is the head of all principality and power. And I'm here today and I really think that, that, that we're going to focus on verse 8 right here. And I really, I really feel like what's in my spirit, what I, what I feel like maybe the Lord wants us to, to hear tonight is that word, that first word of the verse of verse eight. Paul said, "Beware, beware, beware." And that word "beware" means to have eyes to see, to be on the lookout, to have discernment. Beware, lest any man spoil you. So I want to preach and teach that to you tonight with the help of the Lord. Please pray with me. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we just thank you, my Lord. Yes. We thank you for your word, my God. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord God, even though the worship wasn't uh, 30, 45 minutes, Lord, we entered into your presence. Hallelujah. And Lord God, a minute in your presence can wash away yes, the burden of this, this life and this fallen world. And the, the woes that we find ourselves in and the confusion, Lord, you can wipe it all away. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we don't deserve it, but the blood has gave us access. So we come boldly, as your word says. We come boldly to the throne of grace. And Lord, we pray right now that your word would go forth. You would help it. Oh God, help me to speak as you would want. And Lord, help us to hear. Let everyone in this room have ears to hear. And anoint them, Lord, we ask it in Jesus' name. Anoint them to hear. Hear, Lord God. Give them eyes to see, my God. And Lord, any that be listening through the through YouTube or whatever, any other way they're listening to this message, Lord, right now. Lord, we ask that you would touch them and anoint them to hear what the Spirit is saying. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. 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 Colossians was a book written by the Apostle Paul to a church that he very likely did not have much physical contact with. And it was a church that he really uh, personally did not, uh, wasn't the founder of. It was likely founded by a man by the name of Epaphras. Epaphras. And this man traveled hundreds of miles to meet the Apostle Paul. He traveled hundreds of miles just to hear the truth one more time. Yes, yes. He traveled hundreds of miles just to sit and hear the words of this man of God. And it wasn't Paul who he was. It was Paul, what he had in within him. Yes. He had the words of eternal life within him. You know, Peter said, where can we go, Jesus? You have the words of eternal life. And Paul had the words of Jesus dwelling in him. Amen. 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 Paul had the words of Jesus within him. For he received the doctrine that he taught from the Lord Jesus. So, Epaphras traveled miles to, to meet this this man Paul again. And likely Epaphras might have been saved in Ephesus under the ministry of Paul. So this man knew Paul. He was saved likely under his ministry. And the Bible says this. How beautiful are the shoes of those who preach the gospel of peace. 
Not because I have nice shoes, but because the name that's on my lips. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He died for you. He shed his precious blood. Glory to God. You feel the power in that name? Amen. Hallelujah. It's not the eloquent speaker. It's not in the man. It's not in the woman. It's not in the microphone. It's not in the television. It's not in the money. It's not in the clothes. It's in the name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. On things in the earth, under the earth, and things in heaven. Every knee shall bow. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful tonight that you have bowed the knee? You have bowed the knee. We have bowed the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Because when you bow it now, you guarantee eternal glory. Amen. But if you bow it later, it's not good. It's not good. It, it, it's not eternal glory. It's eternal doom. But whosoever will, let them let him bow that knee today. Today is the day for salvation. Today is the day for salvation. Glory to God. Best day of my life. January 2nd, 2012. Praise God. Woo! I'll never forget that day. I'll, I'll never forget that day. January 2nd, 2012. I remember it like it was yesterday. In New Orleans. Of all places to get born again, huh? Because <laughs> like somebody getting saved in Las Vegas. God, God will save you anywhere. Wherever yeah. you in. Yeah. Wherever you in. Yeah. Whatever you in. Go ahead and call on him. He'll pull you out of it. That's right. I said he'll pull you out of it. Yes, yes. Glory to God. Man, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Beware, lest any man spoil you. Paul wrote this, this epistle, and he was coming against false doctrine. And he was coming against a false way that was trying to infiltrate this church who had been founded upon the truth of the gospel. The truth of grace and faith. The truth of Jesus Christ and him crucified. So Paul wrote this letter in, pretty much in, in refute. And to set the standard and say, hey, you need to come back to the, the place when you first believed. The, the simplicity of the gospel. So he, he said, beware lest any man spoil you. Beware. Like I said, it means to, to have eyes to see. To discern. Are you looking out today? For, for a false way. Or are you taking heed, as Jesus said, to what you hear? Take heed to what Amen. you hear. Yes, yes. Take heed to what you hear. For what goes in, it, it will have an effect upon you. Amen. Music, teaching, preaching. Take heed to what you hear. Lest it, lest it lead you in a wrong direction. Amen. Yes. And Paul said, lest any man spoil you. So the Bible tells us here in Colossians 2 and 8 that a man can spoil you by his teaching. Yes, yes, yes. A man can spoil you. So I'm here to tell you, if a man can spoil you, then a man can preserve you. Yes, yes. A man can preserve you. No, no man should be high and exalted in his calling. But I'm telling you, God in Ephesians 4, 11 says he calls men and women into the fivefold ministry to preach and proclaim the truths of the gospel to keep you from error and to keep you from going astray and believing a lie Amen. and believing a lie. Many people believe that they're in a true, a true right way, but they're believing a lie. And they have been spoiled by a man. A man preaching and teaching a way other than the blood of Jesus. So tonight we need, to, we need to beware. We need to be on the lookout for something that's false. Something that is not lining up with God's word. But I'm here to tell you I have the key. I have the answer to the discernment that you seek. Amen. And it is this. If you will anchor your faith. In the cross of Calvary, what Jesus did there, anchor it there, and like a drowning man grabbing onto a life raft, if you will hold on that tight, you will have the discernment when the time comes. Yes, yes, yes. The Holy Spirit will be, the grace of God will be with you to show you, to speak unto you yes, that Hallelujah. false way when it comes. And it might even have a little bit of Jesus mixed in it. Yes. Yeah. Or a lot of Jesus. That's mixed right. In it. That's right. Because what better way can Satan tempt a man than with using a little truth? Right? Man. Using a little truth. Amen. Another Jesus, another gospel. But 
we preach. I said we preach. Hallelujah. We preach Christ crucified. Hallelujah. Christ crucified. Yes, that's Lord. the power of God. That's the power of God. And that's what you need to hear. So if you're in church, you need to be hearing Christ crucified. If you're at home, it's Christ crucified. Hallelujah. And you will be kept by the power Amen. of God. Amen. Kept by the power of God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand for the truth, please. I don't have to say please. It's good to have truth. I, I praise God every day for his truth. The truth that we have. The, the cross, the grace of God, which teaches us and changes us on a daily basis. Amen. I mean, what a blessing. I mean, we can't, we can't say that, that, that we know everything that the Bible says and we, and we have the correct interpretation of every single scripture. But I'm telling you one thing. We have more than 95%. Yeah. More than 95% we're walking in the power of God's spirit. Walking in the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. I would, I would dare say 99%. I mean, with the, the, it's all about the cross. When you get the cross, when your eyes can see the finished work, the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible will open up unto you. Yes, yes. You will be able to read it, and everywhere you look, you will see it. That's the cross. It's not, it's, see, with the thing with Haman, when he got home on, on, on the gallows, it was, it was a type, Haman was a type of Satan. Mordecai was a type of, he was a type of Christ, but then he wasn't crucified, but Jesus was crucified. <coughs> but he still was a type of Christ because Haman was, was a type of Satan trying to kill Mordecai. But see, Jesus was. But in typology, it was the, when the typology was when Haman was actually killed on the gallows. And it was Satan came upon man. The Bible says that, that when Judas... When Jesus grabbed the sop and he dipped and he gave and he told John, he said, the one that I give the sop to or the bread, that's the one. That's the one who's going to deceive and who's going to turn upon me. And then after Jesus did that, John knew who it was, John the Beloved. And then the Bible says this, then Judas left out and it was night and Satan entered into Judas at that time. And what did he do? Judas. He handed over our Lord to be crucified. He handed over our Lord to the religious leaders. So Satan entered into Judas. It was Satan's plan to crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. But he had no clue what he was doing. He had no clue that he was actually, he was actually killing, murdering. He was defeating his own self by, by influencing man to crucify this yes, innocent, yes, this amen. innocent lamb. This innocent son of God who was without sin. But glory to God, it was our victory. Amen. It was our victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you still believe tonight, you are victorious through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are not only victorious, but you are perfect in God's eyes. For God loves you. He sees no sin within you. Amen. Because Hallelujah. you believe. All because you believe. Amen. We serve a good God. We Lord, serve a mighty Lord. God. Yeah. We serve a God whose grace is only but amazing. That's Amen. all you can say. Hallelujah. It's amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Hallelujah. How sweet the sound. Save, bro. That saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm yes. found. Amen. Hallelujah. I was blind, but now I see. Amen. That word beware, I see now. I see it's all about Jesus Christ yes, and yes. crucified. Yes. There's no man going to spoil me. I'm following the blood-stained banner. Wherever yes. it goes, I'm going. Amen. Wherever it goes, I'm going. You're not going to deceive me. You're not going to spoil me. I know the truth. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing. I know the truth of the gospel. I know what the word says. The word says Jesus Christ loves me and he died for me. And that's it. If you're not preaching Christ crucified, I don't want to hear it. Amen. Glory to God. That should be you. If you're not preaching the cross, I got to get, I got to get up on out of here. Yes, amen. I can't stay any longer. I love you. You're still my brother if you say it, but I cannot sit under your ministry yes, if you're yes. not preaching Christ Hallelujah. crucified. Because it is the power of God. Amen. And I need the power of God in my life. Because these things that I face, they are powerful. So guess what? I need some power in my life. And it comes through Calvary. Hallelujah. The power of God. The preaching of the cross. 
<laughs> not in uh, not in uh, wisdom or words, right. just in the 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 subject matter, just in the content of what that means. Christ crucified. Dwell on that. We well, can stay mean, right there. Christ right, crucified. Yes, yeah. We can stay right there. And we'll get blessed Hallelujah. every time. Amen. Every time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Beware lest any man spoil you. That word spoil means to take away captive. Take away captive. And I want to touch on this. If you haven't read the book of Galatians, it's six chapters. Six chapters. I suggest that you do. And the book of Galatians teaches this, that there is a way we can live by law or we can live by grace. And I'm telling you, grace is so much greater. Amen. Law is when we devise or scheme up ways to live for God and try to please him by what we do and try to overcome sin by what we do. And it really is a burdensome, it's a burdensome walk to say the least. And this, this word spoil means to carry away captive. So don't let, don't, don't let yourself, any man, you are part of this any man. That's right. Yes, don't spoil yeah. yourself through law. Don't spoil yourself through trying to make up a rule and a routine or just go through religious uh, emotions. Okay, I'm going to church Sunday morning and I'm going to give God my hour or two hours. And then I'm going to go back and just live my life like God really doesn't exist. I mean, yes, he's in the back of your mind, but your life is not reflecting. You're, you're not really wanting all that God has for you. So this is, this is living by law saying, okay, my hour, two hour earns me something with God. But God doesn't want your hour or two hours. He doesn't want my hour or two hours. He wants my heart. Amen. He wants all of us. And guess what? We have no right to ourselves any longer if you've been saved. The Bible says you are not your own. Amen. You are not your own. You have been bought, not with silver or gold, corruptible things and such, but you've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So you're not your own tonight. So I'm telling you, whatever it is that's keeping you from letting go, you, got, you need to push that thing to the side. You need to come to God tonight. Tell him, Lord, I don't, want this, I don't want this hindrance anymore. This thing is keeping me from getting all that you have for me. And Lord God, this thing can end at any moment. I don't want any regrets. I want everything that you have for me. I want all your blessings. I want all your peace. I want all your joy. I want it all, Lord. And whatever it is in the way, he's just wanting us to bring it to him. To bring it to the cross. And tell him, Lord, take it. Take it. I want you. I don't want. I don't want religion. I don't want uh, just a just a form of godliness, Lord. I want the power of your crucifixion to yes, know you, yes, yes. to know you in a greater way. And God will give you that. He's not worried about your your failure, your shortcoming. He's he's worried about it if you get comfortable in it. I said he's worried about it if you get comfortable in it. Because it's keeping you from him. Yes, he wants you. He wants to know you. He wants to walk with you, talk with you, give you pleasure and joy that you seek. Because I know we seek it in all the wrong places sometimes. But it's found at the feet of Jesus. Yes, amen. It's found at the feet of Jesus. Don't spoil yourself. Don't, don't carry your, yourself away as a slave trying to please God in what you do. And don't let no man try to put a a yoke of bondage upon you either. Because there's a lot of ways out there that, that'll, that'll be appeasing to the flesh, but then you go that route, and then next thing you know, you're walking in self, and you're finding defeat, 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 defeat. But I'm telling you, it's all about grace. And grace Hallelujah. only comes through Hallelujah. faith. Faith in Calvary. Faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 8.32 it says this, that God, God delivered up his own son for us. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Amen. All things. Whatever you need tonight, it's in those two words. All things. Hallelujah. All things. Hallelujah. How shall he not with his son give us all things? So this is the key. Because he gave up his son, 
Now you get whatever you need. Hallelujah. Because he gave up his son. Glory to God. Amen. You just got to take it. You just got to ask for it. Ask for it. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. Whatsoever you shall ask in the name of Jesus, it shall be given Amen. unto you. Amen. Unto you. Will you ask him tonight? I'm going to ask him tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I want my blessing. Amen. Jacob said, and I'm not letting you go till you bless me, oh God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beware lest any man spoil you. Oh, before I go on, God, I needed to be saved. I asked him, God saved me. I needed, I was a little empty. I needed to be filled, and God filled me. Yes, oh, glory to God. Last yes. night, I needed to be healed. I asked him, and God healed me. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Ask him tonight. Ask him tonight, and he's going to give it to you. Yes. He's yes. not worried about, oh, are you good enough? Get that out of your mind. Am I good enough? You're not good enough. Amen. No, I'll tell you right now, you're not good enough. Yes, sir. How do I know? Because I looked in the mirror this morning. Uh -huh. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. Amen. But guess what? He said, come through the blood. Yes. Come through the blood Amen. and it's yours. Hallelujah. It's yours. I saved you, didn't I? I saved you when you was a poor, wretched sinner. How much more do I want to bless you now? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How much more do I want to bless you now? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, what man thinks, and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. That was verse 8. He said, through philosophy, you know, man thinks a lot of things. Man tries to be really smart. But the greatest wisdom, the greatest intellect of man is foolishness compared to God. Amen. You, if I had a Bible, I'd lift it up. So I'd lift up the iPad. <laughs> this is the wisdom of God 2016 2016 now so we lift up the Bible it's on iPad so the Bible is the wisdom of God the cross of Calvary is the wisdom of God if you want to know what the truth is if you want to know what God says about life and eternal life and death and hell and the grave what happens open up the word of God and dig amen Open up the word of God and dig. Because if you've been born again, you can indeed understand the scriptures. Listen to me now. That's right. Listen to me. If you've been born again, you can understand the scriptures. Satan fights. Satan fights. Our flesh fights against us just sitting down. Whether it be with a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or a cup of ice water. Satan, our flesh and other and demonic forces fight against that. We have time for everything else. And I speak to myself, numero uno. I'm called to preach. I need to be, I need to be giving myself over to this word more than I do. But I can, I can bet we can all say that. But this is what we need to get back to, church. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We need to get sit down, open our Bible, and let the Lord fill us with truth. Yes. Fill us with truth that it'll bless our lives, that it'll increase our faith in the cross, that it'll point us to the correct object. And not only that, but when a man or a woman comes unto you and asks of you and asks you of the hope that lies within you, you'll be ready to give that word. You'll be ready to tell them, this is why. Matthew 24, 13. Bam! Take that. Take that, the word of Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be filled with it. I can too. Let's go drink. Let's go sit at his feet. Let's find time for the Lord. Yeah. He found time for us when we when we didn't when we were lost. He found time for us. So philosophy is what man thinks. Man, oh, well, I believe this about God. I believe that about God. I think this. Well, I don't, I just don't believe that. Well, I don't care what you believe or don't believe. If it's not in the Bible, I don't want to hear it. I can't believe it. Because they had a little fellow last night, and he told me this. I talked to a guy last night. He said, um, well, I just think after this life, I'm going to have a higher plane and, 
and, and tranquility and et cetera, et cetera. You know what I asked him? I asked him, well, where'd you, where'd you get that from? Where'd you get that from? What tells you that, that that's going to happen for you? That you're going to have just a, a blissful eternal life and it's just going to be no more, no more this and no more that, but it's going to be uh, just all ooh, 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 just all, you know, goosebumps all the time and just sensations. Who told you that? Well, God told me that. That's what he said. God told you that. Well, if God tells you something, it's going to come through the word of God, Amen. through the Bible. God, it's not, right, it's not right to think that we have a God, a loving God at that, and we most definitely do, who's going to leave us down here with, with just our imaginations to come up with the truth. Not going to happen. God gave us truth. And if it's not in the word of God, the Bible, then it is not truth. Amen. So the man, the man, who, the young man who told me that, what are you going to risk your eternal, your eternal life, your eternal life and or damnation upon? Or upon what man says or upon what God says? The word of God. That, see, through philosophy and vain deceit. This is what we need. We need the Word of God because there are men out there who will say who will say something that makes you feel good. Who will say something that will might be what you want to hear. Oh, you can do that. You can you can you can go and live just live a good life. Be a good person. You don't have to accept Jesus Christ. It's not. I mean, yeah, he died on the cross for our sins, but as long as you're a good person. But no, that's what man thinks. So. I want to know what God thinks. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Philosophy and vain deceit. There are people out here who are using the name of God just to get, just to get something out of it. Whether it be people, prestige, or money in their pockets. They're using the name of God. But I know one thing. The man of God who mounts his pulpit on a weekly basis and the other men of God who I know on a personal basis... We're not chasing money. We're chasing the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're wanting, hallelujah. We're wanting the Lord to touch lives. We're wanting those who have been saved to be encouraged and edified. Built up in Him. Built up in Him. So just thank God that you've, you, you desire the truth and God gave it to you. Yes, yes. God gave it to you. Hallelujah. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Beware. If it's not Christ crucified, throw it out. Take it out with the garbage on Sunday night. Amen? Amen. Uh, for in Him, that's right. the Bible says, yeah. in Him, in Christ Jesus right. dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know, God, y'all remember the tabernacle? Y'all remember that? Y'all heard yes, about the tabernacle? Yes. A place where the, the very presence of God dwelt in the Ark of the Covenant. Do you remember that? You know, God dwelt in that tabernacle. But when Jesus came, God dwelt within the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The power and the, the, the very presence of God was within Christ Jesus. And he was reconciling men back unto himself, God was. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But now, but now, <laughs> now God chooses to dwell within his people. Amen. He dwells within us. He does not desire a, a tabernacle built with hands. Now he wants to live within you. The Holy Spirit, the presence of God lives in you. Amen. Whenever Amen. you get dry. Yes, Lord God. Whenever you get dry, whenever you get weary, just ask God, the Holy Spirit within you. Lord, encourage me. Lord, touch me. And this is what I, I feel that I have done sometimes but I realize that when I don't do it, when I go to pray to God, we'll pray because tribulation comes our way. Once you get saved, Satan sees a big X on your back. So tribulation comes our way and we'll pray. But guess what? Sometimes we'll just go through the motions. Sometimes we'll pray trying to earn something. Sometimes we'll pray just because we know it's the right thing to do. But if you do this, if you will do this, if you will just sit down. 
Turn off that stupid phone. <laughs> that phone gets in my way sometimes. So if we'll just sit down and really talk to God out of our pure heart and mix that prayer with genuine faith and hunger after his presence and after his touch, he will. That situation, that circumstance, that hurt will still be there, but it will not be as heavy. The, the weight and the burden will be lifted from your shoulders. But prayer in faith. If any man acts, let him come in faith. Nothing wavering. For a man who doubts, let him not think that he can receive anything of the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Come in faith. And come with your whole heart. Jeremiah said this. He says, if you call unto me, I will answer you. If you call unto me, I will answer you. And then it says a verse later, if you seek me with your whole heart, then you shall find me. That's all God's asking for you tonight. Amen. And from me. Seek me with your whole heart. For in Jesus dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So this in Christ Jesus, when he walked upon this earth, when he healed the lame, when he caused blinded eyes to see, when he rose the dead even, that was the, 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 the deity of God Almighty working through this man. The power of God, the Holy Spirit, a man which had no sin and had the Spirit of God without measure, without measure, God was in Jesus Christ, reconciling the world back unto himself. Think about it. That's how good God was. He said, I see you down there. You're hurting. You're bound in sin. You're destined for eternal hell, but I'm going to come. I'm going to take the punishment, the, the, the death that you deserve, and I'm going to die on a cross and pay that debt. Pay that debt. Yeah. I'm going to pay that debt that you may be set free. Yeah. And I'm going to overcome the grave. Yes. And thank God he did. Yes. Thank God he did. Hallelujah. And verse 10 is, is a verse that, that we need to know. And you can learn this. You can, you can quote this anytime. And as long as you know this, as long as you believe this, you won't search anywhere else. As long as I believe this, I won't search anywhere else. I need to hear this tonight. Because I, my soul has been just, it's been a war going on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's been a war going on inside of me. Just like, I know God is all I need, but, but, my flesh other, other, my mind just thinks that, oh, let's go, let's do this. And if, boy, if I just get that, boy, if that just happens, if, if that, if that day would just hurry up, I know God said it's going to happen, but if that day would just come on and get here, but no, see, that's the wrong thinking. That's a lie from yourself. That's a lie because the Bible says right here in verse 10, you are complete in him. And how did you get in him? The day you got saved, the day you asked Jesus Christ into your heart was the day that you were complete. You're complete. You're full. You have no need of anything else today other than to know that everything that you have need of is in Christ Jesus Amen. and within you because Christ is in you, Amen. the hope Amen. of glory. Amen. So whatever you're lacking tonight, if there's a heartache, if there's direction needed, you're complete. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we are we are full. We are full, crammed full, crammed full with, with everything we need. We're complete in Him. And He is the head of all principality and power. See, we serve a God today that no demon, no devil can ever think of defeating. Yes. We serve the God who they tremble at. Yes. You remember, you remember when Jesus came, Jesus came walking through, and uh, I believe he was in the synagogue. There was a man possessed with uh, with the devil, and you know what that that demon cried out? He says, "Who art thou? Who art thou, thou, thou son of God? We know who you are. You're the Christ. How are you coming? Are you coming to torment us before our time? They know. Yes. They yes. know. They know him. Amen. They know his name." Hallelujah. They know his name. Paul used that name in Acts 16 when that woman, that woman was following him and she was saying, oh, these are the men who, who give us the words of eternal life. He says, come out of them, you devil. 
in the name of Jesus, and it came out of her. And she was loosed from those chains. She was loosed from those demonic forces who were, who were opening up the, the future unto her, who she was gaining wages with. Because all of this power that was in her, this power so-called, <laughs> had to get up on out when yeah. the name of Jesus is spoken. Amen. So, you are complete in him, in Jesus. So, whatever you need tonight, this is your key. Whatever you need tonight, Hallelujah. this is is your key to open that door to your blessing. Remain. Abide. Rest. Remain. Abide. Rest. In Him. In Christ and what He did for you at the cross. Yes, amen. Don't go anywhere else. Right. There is no pleasure. Amen. There is no joy in the flesh. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. There is no joy in the flesh. Give yourself wholeheartedly to God and His calling on your life, whatever He wants for you. And you'll find true joy, true peace. And let Him, let Him do in you what He wants to do because I don't care who you are, whether you're called to preach or not, this is what God wants to do with you. He wants your life to be so bright that even in the darkest places, that they'll, they'll just see that bright light shine. The light of the Lord Jesus Christ. For you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. A light on the hill cannot be hid. Let God shine his light in your heart. That it will shine to this dark world. That's what people are looking for. They're looking for the truth. They're looking for the truth. And you have the route to victory. You have the route to overcoming life. Hallelujah. And favor of God on your life. Favor of God. When he sees that faith in the correct object, he's going to pour out his favor. He's going to pour out his joy. He's going to pour out his blessings on you because you are complete, because you are perfect. Your condition may not be perfect, but your position is. And if you will let him, he will progress you by his grace, not by your law, yeah, not yeah. by your works, not by your strength. By my spirit, Amen. says the Lord. Amen. By my spirit. And that is what we need. That is what we long for. Hallelujah. More of God. More of Jesus. To know him more. So, come and rest. Weary child, come and rest. That is what we need today. We need to beware. Lest any man try to pull us from the path of the cross. Jesus walked it. He walked it one time. We must walk it daily. Amen. Walk that path to the cross, which leads to abundant life. Amen. The thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. That's Christians too. That's Christians too. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to kill your prayer life. He wants to destroy your faith. But the cross will keep you. The cross will keep you. Jesus will keep you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.